Bannister Brothers is incredibly significant because it was the last double hanging in New Brunswick. Those two boys uh, really didn't deserve what happened to them. My personal opinion, it should have been their mother. I'm gonna ask again. Who is the shadow figure that just joined me in this hall right now? Do you believe that you deserve to die? Someone's touching my shoulder. Someone has their hand on my shoulder right now. You saw a shadow? I'm standing here at the photo booth. You saw a shadow? Keep me here. So many voices. They all want their spotlight. This energy just overcame my body right now. Oh my god, the energy just overcame my body right now. Charles, Charles, come here. Come here, right now. Shadow. Shadow. Son of a What? I felt that right there. I came over, but then someone had their hand on my shoulder and was like pressing down. about the damn shadow figures here. Who's just at the end of the hall right now? <sighs> I'm literally so close to collapsing right now. I'm shaking. So we got our passes on, the night officially starts. So the entire night we're gonna be locked inside of this jail. I'm super nervous, but I think I feel a little bit optimistic. So let's go take a look. Wow. Oh my God. You're gonna wanna take a look at this. Look at that. No way. <laughs> Oh man, that's good. That is creepy. My name is Natasha Marsh and myself, my husband and my daughter, we own and live in the old Dorchester County Jail. Um, so I guess I'm a head matron. <laughs> it's a tour guide. Um, help tell the stories, make sure our guests are comfortable and get to uh, share our house with people, which is pretty special. So the building is almost 150 years old. It was built in 1875 and decommissioned just a little over 20 years ago in 1998. Uh, the story of the Bannister brothers is incredibly significant because it was the last double hanging in New Brunswick. Those two boys uh, really didn't deserve what happened to them. Uh, my personal opinion, it should have been their mother that was executed, not them. Um, she took advantage of the situation for her own gains, which is incredibly inappropriate. Um, I'm a mother, I don't know how someone could take advantage of their children like that. So, the most famous story in here is the two Bannister brothers who are hung by one rope. They are known to be here. And I think tonight we're going to try and contact them. And there's also a little girl named Abigail. So, if the boys are here, or if Abigail's here, feel free to come out. You got a weird feeling too? Mm-hmm. You can feel the energy for sure. Each room has, man, I missed this place, so. Yeah? We've always gotten such like good activity here and, and Natasha was saying that the energy has been like spiked recently, so. This is where we're gonna be spending a lot of our time, so look at this. Okay, so this is the most active wing in the entire jail. And I think today we're gonna spend some good time in here. Yeah, because last time we were here, there was still like a lot of stuff, so we weren't actually able yeah. to like fully go in and spend a lot of time in it, so. But the scary thing is, whoa, whoa, <laughs> no way. That just shut off. Yeah. Literally, yeah, everything yeah. is charged right now. <laughs> Okay, I was gonna say the scary thing is 
is the inmates that were down here had front row seats of all the hangings mm -hmm. that happened. So upstairs, the gallows hung right down here, like literally right there. Short and sweet version. Um, I don't know how sweet we can we can make it, but uh, so Arthur and Daniel Bannister, they were executed here in the jail on September 23rd, 1936. And they were essentially executed because of their mother. Uh, she had a plot where she was going around town telling different men that she had had their baby. And in reality, what she was doing is pushing a doll around town in a carriage. Her sons, the boys, they were inbred. And so they were 19 and 21, but mentally they were like six or seven year old children. And mother used that to her advantage. And she had manipulated her sons into going and kidnapping her a two month old baby from this family that lived up the road. And back in 1936, you did as you were told. Um, so the boys went on their mother's command to go and kidnap her, this child and their 14 year old sister was also sent along to help um, get this child for the mother. The sister, she was a little bit more of a sound mind. And so when the boys were leaving with the baby, they had been convinced by their sister to actually set the house on fire. And in doing so, the mother, the father, and another baby ended up dying as a result. So Arthur and Daniel, they were sentenced to death for murder times three and kidnapping. Their mother was sentenced to three years in jail for masterminding the crime, but she was actually only incarcerated for six months. She was actually incarcerated here in this facility, so she was actually upstairs in her cell, just less than 20 feet away from her sons in their death row cells waiting to be executed. God, I'm nervous right now. I just looking down that hallway right now, you can just feel so this is also the side where like the murderers were and like the rapists and that's why they call it the dark side because it's all like the darker crimes and apparently this cell with the green light is very active oh my god i feel so heavy in here how did you just walk in there <laughs> you just walked right in there right oh, now, it's like so incredibly cold Oh my gosh. Whoa! Yeah. Why is it like, so cold? I have goosebumps all over my body. Wow. There's something about this way. So yeah, right over here, as you guys can see, the spot on the roof, they say they were trying to figure out that, they were trying to find the gallows in there and they couldn't really find it, but they found, they just drilled a hole through there and this is where they would have hung. And the inmates, literally, the inmate that would have been right here, would have seen the guy dangling where we are right now. Mm -hmm. That is just crazy. I have no say in anything right now. And not to mention that this area would have been just pitch black. Yeah, because this part right here, the cell right in front of us, was the hole. Yeah. So there's no windows in there, just a tiny cell. People would spend up to two weeks in there with just a bucket and bread and water. Arthur and Daniel, they were sentenced to death for murder times three and kidnapping. Their mother was sentenced to three years in jail for masterminding the crime, but she was actually only incarcerated for six months. She was actually incarcerated here in this facility, so she was actually upstairs in her cell, just less than 20 feet away from her sons in their death row cells waiting to be executed. A lot of people don't know or understand this, but uh, a double hanging means that they were actually physically hung back to back with one rope around both of their necks. And the reason why they were the last ones hung like that in New Brunswick is because those poor boys actually suffered for 21 minutes before they were officially pronounced deceased. Now what breaks my heart is neither one of the boys actually had the capacity to understand what was about to happen to them. So when they were brought out of their cells and placed back to back and the noose was put around their necks, the youngest boy actually said to the priest that was here, he asked, why is this rope around my neck? It's really tight, can you loosen it? And so the priest did loosen the rope a little bit and he just said, say a prayer son. And they said a prayer and sadly 21 minutes later, they were pronounced deceased. Now those two boys are actually buried in our backyard. They're very, um, their presence is very well known here in the jail. They're not shy. <laughs> 
but they're not um, they're not angry. They're mischievous. Yeah, it's just crazy. We didn't really have access or good access to this spot, but I think tonight we should focus our attention here mm -hmm. and just see if we can get somebody. I also think we should focus some of our attention outside in the courtyard. To try and find. To try to see where the boys are buried because they're buried in one coffin. A single person coffin has both of them in it. Yeah. So. I've met a few people with a little bit of pre-existing knowledge about the story of the boys and they come in here with the mentality that, oh, they were cold blooded killers, they deserve to die. To die. Not so much. Not so much. I've met direct relatives of Arthur and Daniel Bannister and that inbreeding that took place over 85 years ago is still trying to be like bled out of the bloodline. Um, this, this young man came here, looked identical to Arthur and every hair on my body stood straight up. Like, it, it was incredible. But it wasn't the first time that the mother had manipulated Arthur and Daniel into a stunt like this. There was two or three instances prior that she was making the boys go and kidnap babies for ransom money, and that had stopped working. So she had to up the ante a little bit, and she had to physically go out and start telling these men that she had had their baby to, to get some form of, of income for the family. It's shadow people, it's things moving, it's the electronics being played with. Um, I don't know how many times I've given tours to people and they don't even realize they're sensitive to the activity in the building until they're walking through and then they tell me like, oh, I feel nauseous or, or like my legs feel heavier. I'm having a hard time breathing. And I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't really know how to be the one to tell you this, but <laughs> you might be a little bit sensitive to some of the stuff in the building. And they're like, what do you mean? Like, they're not gonna come home with me, right? Like, <laughs> they're happy here with us, I'd like to think. Um, we tell their stories and, and share the space and allow other people in the building for them to play with. I'm sure they get bored of just playing with the three of us, so. <laughs> It can be a little bit unsettling at times, that I, that I can't deny. Uh, many occasions where I've been down the dark side, uh, you have that sensation of being watched or not being alone. And I've turned around and I've seen faces poked out of the cells looking down the hallway at me. Uh, there's a telephone booth at the end of the hallway and quite often you can catch reflections of people standing behind you, beside you, things like that. Um, myself and my husband, we kind of have a, a little joke between us, like if you walk past a reflective surface and you don't see anything, you don't look back because um, <laughs> you never know what you might catch. Um, and that's and that's part of the fun too for like our, our overnight guests and our tour guests like when you take a bunch bunch of pictures and then and then you go home and you're looking at your picture and you're like oh I see orbs or I didn't remember seeing that when I took that picture <laughs> fun things like that. <laughs> so talking to Abigail or the boys or even the mother of the Bannister boys or any other soul that is kind of. Still lingering here, you're welcome to chat with us. We're gonna be spending the entire night, we're gonna be locked in this jail. So this is your chance to scare us, try and scare us right out, or at least try and let us know that you're here with us today. And Natasha actually explained to us how the majority of the people, or a good portion of the people that stay here, feel like a heaviness. Mm -hmm. and a trickster and almost like like someone's there you know yeah and a lot of locals claim this to be a very haunted attraction you know you could actually stay the night in a haunted job that's cool but mm -hmm. how many people you know leave being a skeptic you know this place really comes alive at night i want people to know that and even during the day it's alive yeah mm -hmm. my name is amelia addis lorraine marsh and I live here in the jail. So when I was about 
about like three or four, maybe even two, I had an imaginary ghost friend and I would be like sitting at my little door explorer desk and there would be an empty chair on the other side and I would be speaking fluently and my mom knows that I'm not being able to speak fluently yet. And so one day my mom asked, what is your friend? And I said, she's a ghost. And of course my mom was a bit freaked out, but I was absolutely okay. And then some ghost explorers came in and they were doing something with their machines out in our gymnasium. And then they got, they caught like a little girl figure. My mom was out there to, just to like check on them. And then they said, are you Abigail or whatever her name was? And then it said yes. So my mom asked, if you still want to keep playing with my daughter, go over on the exercise machine and jump on it. And you can see it walks over there and it starts jumping on the thing you can see on the machine. And the thing that always gets my mom was you could actually see that leather moving up and down as if there was a real force moving on it. One day my mom asked, how does Abigail come here? And then I take her out of the apartment and then go into the VIP room and then I point to like over where the TV is and close by the painting is. Then I said that's where the portal is and it was a little bit unsettling but it was where it was. So my mom was just kind of like, okay, she's here. I'm fine with it as long as she doesn't hurt my daughter, she'd love to stay. So this is the second floor where death row is. If there's someone in here, we just came to say hello. You get such a weird, like ominous feeling in here. It's almost like you just, like it's not negative, but you know someone's here. Honestly though, I do feel like more comfortable up here than I do down in the dark side. Yeah? I feel like I'm constantly being like watched on the dark side and kind of like teased a little. Really? Yeah. You know what's weird? The footsteps that we heard in the door, where did they go? Like we didn't hear them go upstairs or like to us. They just kind of vanished. Like what was that? I don't know. You know, like that was really weird. <sighs> instantly right now. Like literally instantly. So these are the boys' cells. Yeah, this is where they were. Let's do a little bit of a, let's do a little bit of a spear talker thing here. Is anybody up here with us right now? Is somebody up here with us? It's weird, it's all be quiet. Yeah. And that was kind of when Abigail was kind of more into my life. Normally she's just like, hi, how are you? Normally just stuff like that, but sometimes she's been like kind of like serious messages, like they're coming or they're gonna be here soon, kind of stuff like that. I'm assuming that when I got this message today, it was you guys coming. And I'm guessing that was true because you guys were coming. <laughs> and I think the reason we have a connection is because we are very common alike. Like, we're besties. I can talk to her. I love her. She's pretty much, like, to put it nicely, she's pretty much a distant cousin that I get to see all the time. I like her, she's very calm, very often. She has like curly red hair, blue eyes, and she was about seven or six years old when she died. She told
told me that she cannot quite remember, but she remembers fire just before she died and a roof. So I'm guessing that maybe her house burned down and the roof fell on her and she died. They say when you have a soul sister or brother, it's like they've died and they've sent something in their soul that they want to be friends with or they want to be connected with. I think the reason that me and Abigail are soul sisters is because we have a strong connection, we have a bond that is thicker than an actual sister or brother. I feel like she is very close to me. She's almost like she's, she's almost like a very close friend and family. She's pretty much who I have as a friend. She's pretty much like like whenever I'm here at my house alone when my mom's doing chores, I'm like, I can talk to her, she can talk to me, I can tell her anything. Sometimes she'll show up on like machines or stuff. Sometimes she'll misplace objects. Sometimes she'll mess with your lights. Sometimes she'll like talk into your camera. Sometimes you'll see footsteps underneath your doors and then you open them and there's nothing. Sometimes you hear whispers. Sometimes you hear knocking. She normally hangs out like in the VIP suite, but sometimes you'll catch her down here or in death row or the dark side. So what do you get right now, being here? Like right in this moment? Yeah, because they were literally... Yes, it's me. Wow. Yes, it's me. So it's one of the Bannister boys, I guess, trying to answer us, or...? It could be. I didn't really ask a question that I related to, but... I'm kind of feeling a little sad, to be honest. Really? Yeah, like I'm feeling a little down. My stomach hurts, but it's like, I don't know how to explain it. But earlier when we like first, first got here, I kept getting this one spirit who kept asking my name. So I would tell them, I'd say like, I'm Chelsea, what's your name? Nothing. Excellent. And they would just keep saying like, what's your name? What's your name? What's your name? Like they're teasing me. Really? And the whole time I keep feeling like, I'm constantly kind of looking behind me because I'm feeling like, Someone's always coming up and being like, what's your name? What's your name? But could it be like, there's been so many stories about a trickster that was actually an inmate down here and he died here. They say that he loves women. A lot of people have experienced this spirit. True, that's it true. It could be that guy. It could be for sure. But like up here, it, it's sad. It's just sad. Yeah. Well, keep in mind, the boys here, I don't even think they knew they were getting executed. No, they didn't really understand. Because the boys were even asking the executioner, like, why, like, what is this rope doing around me right now? Yeah. You know, and all the executioner had to say was like, just say your prayers, kid. You know, like, that's sad. Like, picture not knowing until you actually get out here and then you see what you're, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, it's just, that's it's probably what you're feeling right now. Yeah, it's just a lot of emotion, you know? It's a, a really sad story and it's just the outcome of it was just upsetting. Everything about it. The boys are definitely here, but for, for me personally, the most active spot in the building is the dark side. I feel more comfortable upstairs in death row than I do down in the dark side. Uh, for me, my mentality behind that is they never actually died upstairs in death row. They died when they reached the bottom of the rope downstairs here in the other cell block there. So there's a lot of uh, residual energy in there, we'll say. It's, it's unsettling. Like, you're cool. I, I know you're there, but like, do you really have to watch me down the hallway? <laughs> If, if we could find, like, if someone could just, like, drop a hint to where they're buried out in the yard, just so we can give them some kind of recognition. For me personally, I would love to find where everybody's buried. Because for me, if anybody feels like they're trapped here, and we can give them that cross or marker just as a sign to respect that they're there, and that gives them enough closure to be able to move on to the other side, perfect. They're, they're welcome to stay here with us. They don't bother me one bit. But if anybody feels trapped here and we can help kind of set them free, I would love to do that.
All right, Charles, our final stop of the intro right now, the backyard, mm -hmm. where they're known to be buried. No one knows where, really, but Natasha was pointing out how the dandelions down there, wow, it's so windy right now, but look at the dandelions. Natasha was actually saying that there's a streak in the middle that no dandelions grow on. Yeah, you can see it. You can see that, right? She was kind of pointing and kind of seeing if you know that could be a possibility that they were buried right there you know people have said over the span of time when a certain part of like grass doesn't grow or something doesn't grow it has something to do with the spiritual world mm -hmm. so that could be very true i guess we'll have to test the waters tonight with the whoa she said i'm guilty said i'm guilty wow i'm feeling that might be may could be which is the brother's mother so I think tonight, Natasha wants us to try and find or try and see if we can get any sort of hint as to where the boys could be buried. Yeah. So I think this could be a two-parter. This could be a very long one episode, but we'll are you ready? Here and let's do it, honestly. I'm, I'm ready. All right, let's lock up, babe. Lock <laughs> us in for the night if this door ever closes. <laughs> Jesus. We're officially going to be locked in here, so it's Let's, just us. Yeah, we have the whole place to There's no guests, nobody, and this could go south, it could go good, but I guess we're going to have to find out, so. Victor. Victor. Alright. Alright, Victor. See you in a few. <laughs> now we set up POVs we got one in the dark side then we got the other one in the far right corner which is gonna capture everything we got a motion light there we got red pot down the hallway here cat balls cat balls everything so eventually we will have one camera each but right now we're just basing it off of the point of views and we're gonna try and see if tonight we could possibly Sorry. what did that just say I have no clue we're gonna try and see if we can come in contact with Abigail. Oh, oh, oh. No way. No way. So it begins. Who is down there? So we also have a rim pod on the other side too. So if that goes off. The cap off. No way, no way. Someone's down here. No way! Do you see that right now? Yeah, you can see the light. And it's only one of them. Can you make the cat ball go off again? Whoa. Someone's right there. And the cat ball, look at the cat ball. They're in the common room. Who's down there right now? If you want us to go to the common room, make the cat ball go off again. Uh, okay. That is so crazy. Time to go down to the common room. All right, so I decided we're gonna swap and do both Spirit Talker right now. Apparently I have to have Wi-Fi to generate some sort of word from the other app, so we're not gonna use it. But we're gonna see who the heck is down here Beginning. We're still here. It's a cat ball again. No way. They really want us to go down in the common room. In the red pod too? I kind of thought to myself, we really got to protect ourselves. This is something not really to play with. We're looking to talk to the Bannister brothers. Or perhaps Abigail or May Bannister, the mother. If you're any of those people, no, please leave. <gasps> Whoa. Wow. So who are we talking to? Wait, I have an idea. Your hair. Your hair. My hair? I don't have hair. So <laughs> like, it's not mine. 
I have an idea. So the cat ball's been going off like quite frequently and it's been this one on the right. So what we can do, since it asked us to technically leave, someone doesn't want to talk, but if we have permission to be here and to communicate with you, can you please make one of the cat balls go off again? The rim is going off so hard right now. If you can't make the cat ball go off, give us some sort of sign that we have permission to talk with you tonight. Wow, are you shy now? You were just lighting them off moments ago. There oh, it is. Yeah. Look. Oh, wow! So we have permission. Okay. Well, I'll introduce myself. We'll both actually introduce ourselves, just in case you guys forgot who we were. So, we came from Halifax. Rich. Rich. My name is Lamar. And I'm Charles. Can we talk to the Bannister brothers? Or Abigail or the mother? If the Bannister brothers are here, can you make the cat ball go off? Someone's Sorry, I lost my life here. Oh, <gasps> you gotta be kidding me right Whoa. now. I lost my life here. Wow. Who are we talking to? As of right now, who just said that? They really want to talk, you can get that energy right now, right? Mm -hmm. The REM pod. The REM kind of sounds like it's doing Morse code. Here. I should take a look at this actually. Yeah. This is crazy. Steven. Steven. Hi Steven. Were you part Who's down there? Steven, are you a part of the jail? Were you once an inmate? Under the ground. Whoa. I just got shells. Someone just walked right by me. Shadow. Oh, no. <laughs> Where are you right now? Oh my gosh. Someone's right there, but are you at the other side of the, the cell? Are you on the dark side? No, they're walking back and forth. Why do I feel like someone's on the dark side? We have a rim back there. We do, and we have the camera going. So. Which went off oh behind the camera. Okay, so... You said you're under the ground and that you died here. Can you confirm, are we talking to the Bannister brothers? If so, make the cat ball go off. Please. Are the lights going off on the REM pod? No. Okay, can you confirm that we're talking to Steve? Either make the light go off, the cat ball, or make the REM pod go really loud. That is crazy right now. Hi Steve. Oh my god, my eyes are watering. Okay. Anywhere. Anywhere. He can go anywhere? Can we ask you guys a question? Yes, I will. No, it's not, and yes, I will. <laughs> what? <laughs> Steve, are you alone right now? If you are, touch the cat ball. And if you're not alone, touch the REM pod, which is that device in the hallway.
He's not alone. Okay. Like th there's just so many different spirits and souls here that like it's hard to gather. That was me. Okay. It was picking me up. It's hard to gather like who is around us and who's talking to us right now, you know? Yeah, it almost feels like it's just beginning. Hear us whisper. Whoa. Well, listen, if you want to whisper for us, that's great. Fifteen. There's fifteen of them? Is there anywhere you want us to go specifically? The loft. The loft? Oh, chills. There's a loft right there. What do you mean? Like a bunk bed. The loft is usually like, um... Catball again. That's not us. No, it's not us. We're not moving. <laughs> and every time that goes off, I get goosebumps and like full body shivers. Like cold patches. Um, and this would be considered a loft as well. Where we are, like a... Genevieve. Genevieve. Okay, so you want us to stay here. Did something happen to you here in the loft or the common area? Please tell us right now. We the can't... loft. The loft again. Would this be considered the loft? Like I'm... I don't know. What do you mean by the loft? There's a set of bunk beds in the cell over there. Is that where you are? Confirm with the cat ball. Are we in the right spot right now? Make the cat ball go off if we are. Make the REM pod go off if we're in the wrong spot. Are you in the field? What? Ailed. Ailed. I don't know what that means. Are you in the dark side? If you are in the dark side, we have a camera. Are you able to go and touch the device that's placed in the hallway there? You did it once for us already. If you're the big. I need more energy. That's fair. Well, we have lots of lights and. Lots of different things that you can use energy from. If you want, when you get enough energy, if you're the banister boys, please go and touch the other REM pod in the dark side. Okay? Somebody did it once already. I feel like we should go and check the dark side. I feel, yeah, like it's, it's, I feel like something's contaminating that REM pod. Like what? I don't know. I just feel like something might be contaminating it. I don't think so. No? Because it stops. Okay. It, I know it's ongoing, but that one's a very sensitive REM pod. Healing. Healing. So there actually could be a spirit touching that one. Because of the inconsistent pattern, it's actually accurate. Okay. And recalibrated it. I just wanted to like make sure. It's not going off right now. True. We're gonna go to the dark side. But just so people know, this is how we calibrate it. So it's it's it can't be contaminated. All right, guys. Gladys. Gladys. The owner of this jail says she wants to figure out where you're buried. If you can do your best to try and tell us tonight, we're talking about the Bannister boys, Arthur and Daniel. Or anyone else who's buried outside. If you can tell us or give us any sort of hint as to where you could be buried, please let us know. Yo, there's something weird about this wing, man. Like, it's... 
actually really freaky. I know. It's complete different. Like, it's a complete different feeling on the other side. I know. So, the reason why they call this the dark side is because... Neither. Some, neither. Is because a lot of the times, they actually see shadow figures. And not only that, they used to hang people at the end of the hallway there. So, what Natasha was saying is... Like, take a look down there. You see the body, it would just drop right there. There's a cell right there, and all through here, you would hear people get hung. Mm -hmm. If someone were to... Stay here. Oh. Why? Fifteen. Fifteen okay. again. Fifteen what? What do you mean by that? Each cell has a number though. What if there's a number 15? Did you hear that? That's a scream. It's kind of like a squeal, huh? Yeah. Are you screaming? What's going to happen if we go down there? There it is again. What the f*** is that? I don't know. It kind of sounds like, like you said, a squeal. But it sounds like maybe like a door opening, but... Yeah. I have no clue. Red bot on the other side. Lights. Yeah, we have the lights on. Do you want them off? If you want the lights off, you gotta make this K2 meter, which is in my hand, go all the way to red. Then we'll turn the lights off. It's, it went to red. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. And it's gone. Charles, it's literally gone. Okay, so I guess that means we have to go lights out. I guess so. What's your name? It's going to red again. My name is Lamar. And I'm Charles. Can you tell us what your name is? That was, that was you. me. Or can you tell us where you are? I have a device in my hand, in this hand right here, that can pick up your energy. Kind of tell us where you are. So we're going to walk... Electric. Yeah. So yeah, up it picks energy. up electromagnetic fields, which basically means you and your energy. So... Oh, as well. Okay. That's good. So if we come close to you, it's going to go off, and then you can chat some more with it. Oh, I just got a really bad feeling. coldness and just a tingling on my neck. Someone's right behind me. I can literally feel someone right behind me. Oh my god, something's tickling my neck. What? Something's tickling my neck. Seriously? Yeah, like something feels like... I feel like something was like on my neck. Like just, I don't know. Oh, that was weird. That's honestly really weird. It felt weird. Who was that? It wasn't anyone, I don't think. Two words. Two words? Who's with us right now? Celebrate. What in the hell? I'm trying to figure out what the heck's going on. Oh, 
Neck. Look up. Is that what it said, neck? No, that's what I'm getting. This is where they would have, right there. Neck. They would have been hanging. Oh, Chels. This is a symbolic reason. Mm-hmm. Eyes are watering. Who's trying to send me a message? Who's trying to talk to me right now? confused on what's happening. Can you turn the light that way? What? You saw someone? Yeah, I saw a shadow. Standing, you saw a shadow? Standing near the photo booth. The really? You saw a shadow? Leave me here. It would have been over here, right? Yeah, I was standing right near the photo booth. The photo closet, whatever this is called. Telephone closet. Remember, Natasha, right Natasha said too that sometimes, like, there is a shapeshifter. No. no. Okay. Oh my god. I feel like we're, like, kind of communicating with, like, a multitude of spirits at the moment, which is fine. Like, I enjoy talking to anyone who's here, but. Can you tell us where to go? Abigail, Amelia said that... Someone outside. Should we go look? There is a shapeshifter. Oh my Again. gosh. Okay, well where are you then? I'm starting to say, I think we should both have a handheld. But where's that voice coming from? You heard that, right? Yeah. Oh. I think it might be people outside. Might be. Five. Five. Well, look. Got one cell here. Two. Three, four, five. Unless the, no the cells are also numbered on the other side, but you can physically see the numbers. So I don't know if the numbers continue or if they restarted on this side. You know what I mean? Right, so it could be five on the other. Let's go check it out. Okay. So we're looking for number five. Got one. Oh wait, the numbers are on the top. Yeah, that's one, sorry. You're right. Two, three, skeletons, four, five. You're in this room? Oh my God. What? <gasps> it's that room. All right, well, I've totally forgot to say this right now. I just got the chills. And I just... This room has something that we did not explain, and I'm gonna explain it right now. Cell number five, right here. Right there. Um, so cell number five had a guy from what? Long story short, this guy, he's long dead. But this dude loves women. And I've had friends where you know, Sarah. they've literally been poked, touched, uh, you know, they've got, they've had their clothing pulled, and this was his cell. And remember at the beginning when I said there was a spirit who's been teasing me? I feel like it's definitely from the person who's in this cell. All right, well, we're in your cell right now. What are you gonna do? Hot. Hot. Maybe it's saying you're hot. Or you. <laughs> no. 
Because you're the woman. I know, I was just trying to turn a knot on me. <laughs> Here, I want to see if there's like any names on the walls that we can kind of hearing. It's just all like, it's all just. These are from the inmates though. Yeah, it is. Like there's These are literally. It's all very like provocative. Like obviously that one. Chair. Chair. Oh, Charles, the chair. Literally right out here. Are you on the chair? Something about the way this entire jail feels is just insane. It's just, it's not negative, but there's a lot going on. Like I a know. Lot. It's, it's something someone needs to experience for themselves. Mm -hmm. This is amazing. It is amazing, isn't it? That we're able to chat with you from the other side. Alter. So we're in cell five now. I'm gonna sit on the bed. Okay. All right. I don't feel comfortable in here. You know, there's a cross right up there. Why do you keep saying room five? What's in here? Was Stacy your girlfriend? Because the female ward was upstairs. There's life after death. Whoa. That's pretty cool. So, why are you sticking around here then? If you spent most of your life in jail, wouldn't you want to be free from it? In the past? Flashing. Flashing? You set up balls all over this place. Are you touching one of them? here with us? Don't provoke us. We're not provoking you. But what if we do? Are you gonna get mad at us? Something doesn't feel right. No. Something feels off. Like we're not welcomed in this one anymore. Like in this very specific cell. Oh. You're not welcome in this cell. What? Oh, me? Aren't you? You're talking about me? Yeah. It just keeps saying one of you is. And I'm assuming you because we're in the hey man you cannot have my girlfriend that's what you're trying to say yes it's me stabbed oh upstairs what stabbed upstairs in the gym someone when was stabbed was, someone was stabbed and murdered are we talking to that person right now What if you... Precipitor. What does that mean? Google that. Why does it keep saying these like... Precipitor. Precipitor. I find Spirit Talker has been saying like... These new words that we've Brother. never... That we've never heard come up on here before. I have no service in the cell. I literally have no service. Walked out. I go. I got it. Whoa, Charles, Charles, come here. Come here, right now. 
Shadow. Shadow. Right here. Darted. Darted? Yeah. Wow. Wow. Oh, chills again. That was you. That made the cat go. I got the other camera now. Who's over here? Vindicta. Whoa. Oh my Vindicta. God, Vindicta? Precipitor? Precipitor? To cause to fall. To throw down. To Haston? To get ahead of oneself. That's what precipitor means. To get ahead of oneself? To throw down? No, it, look, yeah, to cause to fall or to throw down. So like a fight? I don't know. I feel like they're trying to like play games with us and not really like give answers, you know? So right now we're trying spirit music box to see if we can get any sort of activity. Abigail might like that because Abigail likes to sing and stuff, right? So. Yeah. Abigail, are you here? If you are, please touch that. Ha ha. <laughs> Whoa. This. What's so funny? Why do you enjoy playing games with us so much? Also, is this Abigail? Are you picking up Abigail? No. No child is present at the moment. Just men. Th at least three. Am I right on that? Can you tell me how many men are around us right now? Either use one of the apps, knock, give me some sort of confirmation or number. Please touch that. <laughs> oh. <No>. <laughs> Can you make it stop? Make it stop, please. They like when we use manners, I guess. Probably if, should anyways. If this is one of the Bannister boys, Daniel or Arthur, can you please touch that? Oh. That's awesome. Thank you guys. Now, can you please touch it if you are Daniel? Hi, Daniel. Benjamin. Daniel, can you make it stop, please? Thank you. <laughs> Daniel, are you here with your brother? Make it go off if you are. Pretty on command. Yeah, that's on command. Thank you so much, Daniel. Can you please make it stop? Don't. Oh. a knock. Can you knock again? Seps. Seps. S-E-P-S? What does that mean? I don't know. I've never heard that word in my life. Seps. Is that like jail lingo? Daniel, was that you who knocked? If it was, make the music... You're safe here. Thank you. Whew. Are you like not picking up like temperatures? Like, yeah, did you feel that? Yeah. 
you here? I don't know what these words mean. Okay, I gotta, I gotta look at these. Yeah, so do seps first. All right, so got a few words here. Furier, vindicta, and seps. I have no service. I have no service right now. Watch yourself here. Yeah, exactly. Whoa. Hi. Watch yourself here? I'm behind you, please. I'm behind trust, you. I don't trust that, so. Oh, yeah. It's weird. It's almost like they're just down there, just waiting right now. Well, what time is it? I wonder. It's 10.06. They would probably all be in their like cells at this point. Yeah. Okay. So these are the people we're reaching out to tonight. We have Arthur, Daniel, L. Newton Killam, which was the executor, and then May, who was the mom of the two brothers right here. All right, do you have service here? Night. Vindicta. Clear or blame suspicion. Hmm. Vindicta meaning. What? Ceremonial act claiming as free, one contending wrongly enslaved. Kind of like the brothers. That's pretty heavy. That's a pretty heavy one. Alright guys, so we've moved up into death row and we are now getting ready for Estes. Now I know this has run a little bit slower, a little bit more mellow than our typical after death episodes, but we're actually testing right now. Estes for the first time, okay. She's ready. I think we're gonna try and find where the banisters are buried. That's the main goal. Natasha has requested to try and get any sort of hint, so let's give it a go. So Daniel, You made it clear that we were communicating with you. Look, I'm sorry for what happened. Are you able to tell me where you're buried, you and your brother? Do you yeah. believe? Do you believe? Who is she? She's talking over me. Do you believe that you were? Daniel. Do you believe that you were? Wow, I can't even talk right now. He's looking for you. Well, where Arthur. are you? For some reason, I can't talk right now. Do you believe that you deserve to die? Is the executioner here, Mr. Killam? L. Newton Killam? If so, can you talk potentially through Chelsea over there? Listen. Her. Hair. Attach. Sit. 
sit next to her. Mischievous. Mischief. Something. Dark side. Wait. What about the dark side? Go. So, I'm going to clarify something right now. This is the gallows right down there. Huh? It leads to the dark side. That's right below us. What about the dark side? Are you down there? Haha. <laughs> Mom? Mom? May. May Bannister, the mother of the boys. Are you here? Sit down. Man, I'm getting the weirdest feeling right now. Chelsea. May, if you're here with us, can At you risk. possibly tell us why you masterminded that whole case? That whole situation that got your boys killed? Needed money. Run. I keep feeling like I'm seeing shadow figures, like being casted in the locker. You getting that? He. Mom. Mom. Are you able to tell us or tell me? Execute. Where you're buried. We want to know where the banisters are truly buried. Natasha, the owner, wants to know too. So if you can tell us any sort of area or any sort of vicinity that you know of or that you could possibly tell us that you're buried near, please do so. Say something in French. Tu parles en français? Sorry. Nine of them were here, outside, at night. You have got to be kidding me right now. The door. Outside. Good night. Where outside? Where outside? Twenty feet. I'm lying there. Twenty feet. And then Who's twenty feet away? Maybe Mr. or the boys? Playing. Twenty feet. Together. This can't be right. Something something weird is happening right now. I'm in the closet. Leave. What closet? Her. Where are you? Her. Top floor. Just a little longer. Forty. Outside. Outside. Help. Outside. Do you want us to go outside? Because we will. You just have to give us an area that you are, okay? We will only go outside if you can tell us yard. where you're buried. Okay? Yard. We know you're buried Seven. in the yard. Are you with the dandelions? Yes. Rhubarb. Rub. Ruby. Are you buried in the patch that no dandelions grow in? He's got to go. He's coming. The honey grounds. The yellow. 
Yellow ones. This is weird. Honey grounds. This is really freaking weird. He's coming. The man needs to leave. Why do you want me to leave? No, not you. He said her. Watch it. Watch it. Am I still talking to Daniel right now? Gone. Somebody just touched the camera. Just clicked it. Got words come up on here, but nothing's been. I'm guilty. I'm making those noises. I'm guilty. Effusis, lapsus, destinare. May. Tenebrae. Tenebrae. These are all words I don't even know. Are you downstairs? Someone's touching my shoulder. Someone has their hand on my shoulder right now. Are you serious right now? Who's that? Whoa, I just got the shit I Goosebumps all over my body right now. Tell me a name. Who is just touching Chelsea's shoulder? Please tell me. Daniel, was that you? No. Arthur, was that you? Yes. So you come out. We haven't heard from you all night. Can you boys tell me why you... What did that say? Vulnerare. What is that word? Vulnerare. So pretty soon I think I'm going to check out the dark side by myself. Chels does not feel comfortable being anywhere alone, which I understand. So I think I'm going to be taking the night vision and a POV, a static cam with me. I'm going to be checking out the dark side where shadow figures are seen. And I think tomorrow, maybe in the morning, we can figure out where outside they are, but... You said the dark side. What, what about the dark side are you trying to explain? Outside. Outside. Skeletons. We know people are buried outside, but... Tell me where. Hi, right, Charles. Tap out. You okay? Oh. Oh. That was heavy. You okay? Yeah. What was that? I don't know. Did that thing just move? It did just move. That thing just moved? It moved. What the hell just happened there? I think I just... I think I just saw that. Like, I wasn't paying attention, but the bed just moved. Avoid this area. Oh! <gasps> no. Yo, that was so heavy. Like, at one point, I couldn't feel my arms. Like, I felt like I was going into, like, a trance-like state. I was getting like really deep into it, but it was like there's so many, so many voices. Like there are so many spirits here. And they all want their spotlight. But like it was, 
I think I could hear Abigail. Like I could hear a little girl very clearly. But there was so much talking over, but then someone had their hand on my shoulder and was like pressing down. Like not like in a mean way, but like you know like when someone stands behind you and just puts your like their hand on your shoulder. That's what it was, but they did it for like a couple minutes. Really? And then it made my whole arm go numb. Like I couldn't feel my whole left arm. It was just completely yes. Yeah. It's saying words that I I've never heard. When was I'm it? gonna save the list and we'll go through it in the morning. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. How were like the responses? Some of them were very accurate. Tell me that was a voice in the hall. That was a she pushed. That was a voice in the hall, right? That was a voice in the hall. Who is in the hall? You okay? Yeah, that one was just wasn't mean or like nothing like negative, but just so many souls are here. Like it's honestly crazy how many souls are here. Like I, I couldn't at times like it was like they were talking over each other like no one hundreds. I we haven't really like made communication with him like really tonight. It's mostly been Daniel tonight. Yeah. But we said you said twenty feet away when I was asking where outside. Twenty feet. So twenty feet away is somebody. You okay? I just shut this. Twenty feet. Okay. So in the morning. Oh. You okay? Yeah, that that was just like drained me. In the morning, we're gonna douse. And any information that you got from that session, we're gonna put out there. And if it said 20 feet, then we're gonna go 20 feet in different directions and see where it lands. And yeah. I'll douse and ask questions and we're gonna get some sort of conclusion. It's scary in here. Hi. Hi. Oh my god, I keep getting like the body shivers. Who's here? A cigarette. Are you smoking a cigarette? Who's with us right now? K2 is going off. Whoa, son of a. What? I felt that right there. Feels what? Take this. Gladys. What did you feel? Okay, that was clear as day. Someone poked me. Look at that too. No way. I'm literally shouting myself right now. Arthur, uh, did you... Oh, 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 oh. As soon as I said his name. Arthur, do you like when I talk to you? Wow, guys. Arthur, if that's you, can you make it go to orange or red? Or if you poked me, can you make that go to orange or red? Just lay your hand over it. Listen, listen. I swear to hoo hoo, it's like a little giggle. Abigail, if that's you, can you make this flash different colors? Make it go to orange. What is that? Did you 
Excuse me, that voice? Yeah, it sounds like I just heard a voice. Is this camera still rolling? Yeah, it's still rolling right now. Oh. All right, you know what I'm going to do? Some, someone's telling me to go down to, to the dark side. Oh. I have to give it a go for some reason. Okay. I think I'm going to try to make another connection with Abigail. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, wow. I swear, when we were editing that, like, go back, because I swear I heard a little girl's voice, like a clear EVP. Really? Like, clear, clear. I don't know what she said, but you could hear the, the little cute voice. I guess I'll see you a bit. See you a bit. Alright, so I officially am in the dark right now. And I'm alone. Just turn this camera on. For some reason, someone said the dark side during the essence. So I am going down here. I'm legitimately by myself right now. Hello? Someone down there? Man, this is out of a movie right now. Wow. Holy Are you able to make a sound first? No way, no way, no way, no way, no way. No. Are you down there? Somebody over there too? Oh. Oh. What the f Oh my god. Holy sh Holy sh Okay. I'm hearing stuff all over now. So this is officially where people would see the bodies dangle and I'm literally by myself who's there guys I can't see a damn thing right now I'm gonna turn this on so if anyone touches that Who's here with me right now? Son of a I, th I swear I'm seeing faces through these cracks right now. What the f No way! You're following behind me! Look, I'm not here to hurt anyone or disturb anybody. Wow. Who was just knocking on the cells?
So I see the REM pod or I hear the REM pod go off on the other side. Not gonna lie. <laughs> I do not feel alone right now, and someone slammed the door too enough to make me almost drop my camera. I'm so glad I caught that too. <sighs> Is someone down here able to tell me where the Bannister brothers are buried? right now who am I talking to who is in this wing right now oh my god do you know that feeling where you have to get out of a place like immediately that's how I feel right now I do not feel like I am what holy f oh my god they were kidding about the damn shadow figures here who's just at the end of the hall right now Can you answer through this device? Or touch that device on the ground there, please. Frank. Frank. Frank, were you one of the inmates here? Holy son of a I just want to say thank you for doing this to let me know that you're here. Literally, guys, the bodies would be dangling right there. Who's that shadow figure? Upset me. Set you. Oh, <sighs> I'm literally so close to collapsing right now. I'm shaking. I'm gonna ask again. Who is the shadow figure that just joined me in this hall right now? Or in this wing? Is that a moan? I think that was a moan. Oh my god. Wow. Oh, I gotta get out of here. Wow, this energy just overcame my body right now. Oh my god, the energy just overcame my body right now. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, thank you. Oh my God, guys, I gotta get out of here. I gotta get out of here. <sighs> no freaking way. No freaking way right now. <sighs> guys, I was literally in the threshold of something very freaking dark. That's crazy to me. People's lives were taken in the exact spot that I was just in right now. I'm literally shaking. Where I'm standing right now too is where I saw this slight shadow figure. Be it was casted where I am right now on this mirror or something. All right, so if you're the shadow man, I'm going to leave you alone. I can't even explain to you guys how nerve wracking it is just standing alone down there. And Chelsea's up there trying to talk to Abigail. And we don't know, there could be something more than what people think is going on here. There could be some sort of portal or vortex that could be, you know, opened here we have no idea but all i know is that there is something any last things to say Thank you so much for, for talking to me. Oh my God. Good morning guys. Last night was crazy. And while Chelsea's is just waking up right now, I decided I wanted to just try and get some closure. And like just walking down here, I'm getting extremely nervous, but is there anyone down here with me? I just want to say good morning. Whoever was down here last night with me scared the hell out of me. So I think I'm just gonna try and do like, just a quick segment here for you guys and see if we can get any names. I do have Spirit Talker running. I'm trying to get some closure. See if we can potentially get exactly where the boys are buried. Or I anywhere. had a good life. I'm sure you did. Do you want me to go in this cell right here? Oh my God, guys. Well, I'm right here lock myself in here there we go man last night I couldn't take it I don't know what happened to me I just couldn't be in here by myself so for those of you guys wondering I'm trying to get closure right now full-on closure can someone tell me where the banister boys are buried Perhaps Abigail can tell me. Can you tell me where the boys are buried? It's dead. It's dead. Oh. No way, man. It's them. You look the same. 
<laughs> wow. Okay. So if you're the boys, can you tell me where you're buried? There's been a lot of people that were, or that have been wondering over the span of time to know where you were buried. What was that? There's walking. We're about to leave this morning. Do you have any last messages you want to get out to us and to the world? Our cameras right now are recording to the entire world. Just in case you didn't know, you have multiple people from different countries watching right now. See. See, as if it's the ocean. S E A. What's that smell? What the hell is that smell? Don't move. So. Right there, I forgot to mention, that is called the hole. That is absolutely 100% segregation. They had no light, they had nothing. They would piss in, in a hole in there. And on top of that, when someone was executed and hung, I'm like shaking right now. They would just see that in the pitch dark, the pitch black. Damn. I gotta go get chills. Little girl. Oh, Abigail. Good to see ya. Wow. Abigail's here with me. That's gotta be Abigail. Alright, Abigail, since you like chills so much and you talked to her last night, I'm gonna go and get her, okay? Hope you don't mind. This is absolutely. No, it's not. Are you a different girl? You're a different girl, aren't you? So it's not Abigail. So who is it? Who's the little girl? Can you answer through this device, please? Are you one of Amelia's spirit friends? Good morning. Good morning. How are you feeling? Good. I'm finally awake. <laughs> Took yeah, a while. Last night was crazy. Yeah, it was. There was a lot going on. Like a lot going on. Yeah. It was a weird kind of haunting that night where they were really trying to make themselves known. Like more than we've ever experienced. But I also felt like they were kind of like there was just so many of them like trying to get in contact with us that we didn't always like. I guess didn't meet our goal fully. Yeah. I'd say we met like 60% of it. Yeah, until we find out where the boys are, I don't think it's yeah. gonna get any further. So why don't we head out for the first time in 24 hours? Yeah. We've been locked in the entire night. Oh, wow. The world is alive out here. We got workers, cars, sounds. <laughs> sounds. <laughs> sounds that aren't ghosts. Yeah, really. <laughs> What's the end plan today? So, since we didn't get to Dow's last night, because we were both really drained and like our energy just went. So, we're gonna try to Dow's. It might be a little windy, but I'm going to try my best. So, our goal right now is just when we're doing Estes method, one of the brothers said that they are 20 feet is where they lay. So, we were talking with Natasha this morning, and she did say that it's around 20 feet to where that dandelion patches yeah. where they think some others are buried. So we're gonna figure it out and see what we can come up with. And I mean, if we can't find anything today, we'll just come back. Yeah, at right? least we got a little bit of a hit. Yeah, exactly. This might be step one. We won't stop until we figure out where those boys are resting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> she good? <laughs> oh my god! Is that heavy? Yeah. If I feel like it's getting contaminated by the wind, I'm just gonna like pause it and then restart it. Can you point me in the direction of where Daniel and Arthur are buried and are laid to rest? Okay. 
I'm going to walk that way. Can you cross the rods when I'm getting close? Or you want me to stop? It's hard to walk with them. Should I go towards the fence? Cross the rods for yes. Yeah, that's a cross. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go towards the fence. Am I on the right side of the fence? You might be further. They're on the other side of the fence. Are you close to the fence though? I have a, a gut feeling, I could be wrong, but my gut tells me that we are on the wrong side of the fence, that it is on that side of the fence, but I think it's kind of like somewhere along the fence line maybe, or near it. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Well, it's weird. It's like a divot in the ground. It goes down right there. I don't know if they'd be buried this close like to the fence, so. Daniel and Arthur, I do want to let you know that you are able to send me a message. Kind of like what you guys were doing last night. And you might be able to guide me more to where your bodies are laying. Should I be on the other side of the fence? That one's contaminated. The Bannister brothers, we're now on the other side of the fence. I don't know what to ask. I just drew a blank. I've been asking this all night. Can you lead us to where you're buried, please? A lot of people- Hear my voice. Whoa. A lot of people want to know, so if you can do your best. Should I move to the left? It's funny because it's actually pointing towards the dandelions. Yeah, I know. No. Should I move to the right? It's weird. It's kind of like pointing towards. Yes. Okay. I'm not like picking up on a lot of energy. It's hard with the wind too. Yeah. Us. 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 The Bannister boys? Maybe? Yeah. I think dowsing might be a little bit hard. I don't want to like get contaminated evidence. Well, what do you think? They're buried here somewhere, somewhere. 20 feet from the door. I but it's 1936. It's almost 100 years since they've been gone. I mean, over time, they could have been pushed to the surface more. But usually, I mean... They were only buried like four feet down and in one single coffin and a lot of people like weren't even buried in coffins. That's the thing too is like there are so many bodies who are probably buried here that it could be more than just the Bannister brothers giving us directions right now. Right? Yeah. I think on a less windy day. Child. I wonder if there are any children here buried. Uh, on a less windy day we should definitely Douse and do like a full solid session of dowsing and spend a lot of time out here. Something tells me it's like over over here. Really? Yeah, I think that majority of the other inmates were buried here. I'm very drawn to here. And I'm very drawn to like them being buried this way. 
All right, well, this is the end. Episode five of After Death, we have done our best to capture the evidence, the claims that have went on here. Um, not only that, trying to see where they're actually buried. The boys are notorious here. We might actually have to return. I think so too. On a day where the wind isn't as strong, we can actually focus more outside and potentially try and figure out that closure for Natasha. So right now she's actually doing a, a tour right now. So we're gonna get out of her hair. Thank you for talking to us and showing your presence. You know, we will be back. We might be back in a few days. So if you guys wanna come out and chat with us then, hang out with us, feel free to. And thank you for scaring the shit out of me last night. <laughs> I might've been scared, but I do appreciate your presence. So hope you guys take care. And we'll see you in soon. the next one. I might have to get out of here soon because I'm feeling my energy drop faster and faster in this place. So. Our lockdown has officially ended and we will be back. And we got a motive, so keep it tuned with the channel. Let's get the hell out of here.